bribery and conspiracy filed against him by the EFCC in the OPL 245 trial. And another case of arson, this time in Anambra State, as some hoodlums attack and burn down divisional police station in the wee hours of today, police authorities say the attackers number up to 30. On business news tonight, African Development Bank Indorama signed $75 million loan agreement to boost Nigeria's fertilizer production and export capacity. On sports news tonight, Newcastle United midfielder Sandro Tonalo has been charged with misconduct by the English Football Association relating to 50 alleged incidents of betting on matches. From the nation's capital, Governor Obasani of Kaduna State offers free education to the recently freed Kuriga students, also rewards family of the school teacher who died in captivity. And in international news from London, a new UN-backed report shows hard statistical evidence that the humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza is turning into a man-made famine. Days after urging Nigerian banks to expedite action on the recapitalization of their capital base in order to strengthen the financial system, the Central Bank of Nigeria on Thursday, that's today, March the 28th, 2024, unveiled new minimum capital requirements for banks, pegging the minimum capital base for commercial banks with international authorization at 500 billion naira. Now, confirming this in Abuja today, the acting director, Corporate Communications Department, this is Hakaba Sidi Ali said the new minimum capital base for commercial banks with national authorization is now 200 billion naira, while the new requirement for those with regional authorization is 50 billion naira. Mr. Sidi Ali also disclosed that the new minimum capital for merchant banks would be 50 billion naira, while the new requirements for non-interest banks with national and regional authorizations are 20 billion naira and 10 billion naira respectively. Now, a circular signed by the Director of Financial Policy and Regulation Department, Mr. Haruna Mustafa, to all commercial, merchant and non-interest banks and promoters of proposed banks emphasize that all banks are required to meet the minimum capital requirement within 24 months commencing from April the 1st of this year and terminating on March the 31st of 2026. According to the circular, the move initially disclosed by the CBN governor, Olaimi Cardozo, in his address to the annual bankers' dinner in November of 2023 was to enhance a bank's resilience, solvency and capacity to continue supporting the growth of the Nigerian economy. But to enable them to meet the minimum capital requirements, the CBN have urged banks to consider to inject fresh equity capital through private placements, rights issues, and or offers for subscription, mergers and acquisitions, and or upgrade or downgrade of license authorization. But furthermore, the circular disclosed that the minimum capital shall comprise paid up capital and share premium only. It stressed that the new capital requirement shall not be based on the shareholders fund. And the CBN circular said the minimum capital requirement for proposed banks shall be paid up capital, adding that the new minimum capital requirement shall apply to all new applications for banking licenses submitted after April the 1st this year. It noted that the CBN will continue to process all pending applications for banking licenses for which a capital deposit had been made and or an approval in principle had been granted. However, it said that the promoters of such proposed banks would make up the difference between the capital deposited with the CBN and the new capital requirement no later than March the 31st of 2026. Meanwhile, the CBN said all banks are required to submit an implementation plan for meeting the new capital requirement no later than April the 30th of 2024. Moving on now to security matters where the defense headquarters has declared eight persons wanted over their roles in the recent killing 
of the 17 army personnel at Ukwama community in Delta State. Those declared wanted are Professor Ekbekwa Arthur, Andowe Dennis Bakriri, Akevuru Daniel Omotebu, also known as Amagben, Akata Malawa David, Sinclair Uliki, Clement Ikolo Ogenekewe, Ruben Baru, and Igoli Ebi. Addressing a news conference on the activities of troops in various theaters of operations, the Director of Defense Media Operations, Major General Edward Buba, restated the military's resolve to fish out the perpetrators of the heinous act. He also affirmed the release of Boko Haram suspect as ordered by the court. The atmosphere is a sober one as the Defense Media Operations hold its bi-weekly news conference to brief the nation on the activities of troops in various theaters of operations. We contain it to make sure it doesn't spread. A director, Defense Media Operations, begins the conference with the announcement of the military's resolve to fish out the perpetrators of the Okokuoma killings. He declares eight persons wanted. We must never allow what happened in Delta State that resulted in the killing of 17 soldiers that were buried yesterday to ever repeat itself in this country again. We must never allow it to happen again. When you look at our armed forces, our armed forces is a force for good. We are deployed across the country for a reason. And it is for that reason that we have put out this banner of eight persons, including a woman, as wanted persons. We will do whatever it takes to get these people. If we need to put a bounty on their head, we will do that. Beyond the Okoma killings, the military announced the release of some suspected terrorists based on a court order. The court in Medugri has ordered the release of 313 persons that have been in detention for terrorist-related offenses. And the release was ordered on the 5th of March, and the reason was for want of evidence. Like I did mention earlier, it's not the first time that this is happening. It has been happening over time. And what the military is doing about it is stressed for us to recognize that these operations are complex operations. So we will improve our battlefield evidence collection if that will help in ensuring that the prosecutions go through. Meanwhile, the military has vowed to rescue all kidnapped victims across the country unhurt. Meanwhile, the Chief of Defense Staff, General Christopher Musa, is asking security agencies involved in the fight against insurgency in the country to maintain a synergy that promotes collaboration and cooperation. General Musa is also emphasizing the importance of building and maintaining strong relationships with host communities in order to gain their trust and support. The Defense Chief was addressing participants at the closing ceremony of the 2nd Chief of Defense Staff Joint Task Force Commanders Conference in Abuja. One of the key takeaways from my discussion has been the importance of cooperation and collaboration. As commanders, it is imperative that we foster a culture of partnership and synergy among our forces and across theaters. Let us restore and sustain the spirit of jointness in our respective task forces and integrate it into our day-to-day -day operations. The challenges in our various theaters of operations have been noted and utmost attention will be given to them. I would also like to emphasize the importance of building and maintaining strong relationship with the communities we serve. The trust and support of the local populace are critical in our efforts to counter insurgency, terrorism, and other security challenges. In keeping with one of the tenets of my leadership concept, which is focused on people's centrism, we must continue to engage with community leaders, religious leaders, and other stakeholders listening to their concerns and addressing their grievances and also involving them in the decision-making process in spite of the current odds. By doing so, we can gain valuable insights, foster cooperation, and build resilient communities that are actively involved in securing their own future. 
Some persons said to be hoodlums have burned the Nene Divisional Police Station in Anocha local government area of Anambra State. It was gathered that the attackers, numbering about 30, stormed the area at around 2 a.m. today and set the buildings ablaze. The State Police Public Relations Officer, SP Tochukwe Kenga, told Channel's television that the hoodlums attacked the police station with improvised explosive devices, IEDs, but were unable to take away any arms, nor were there any casualties. It was gathered that during the attack, the hoodlums were heard shouting that the divisional police officer had stayed in Anocha for over 15 years and therefore must leave. They also alleged that the Anocha police station had become a place that calls to memory activities of the disbanded Special Anti-Robbery Squad, SARS. To the judiciary, Justice Abubakar Kutiji of the FCT High Court Jabi Abuja has dismissed the charges of fraud, bribery and conspiracy filed against a former Attorney General of the Federation, Mr. Mohamed Adoke, by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC. Ruling on the no-case submission made by Mr. Adoke, Justice Kutigi said the EFCC failed to prove its charges of fraud, bribery and money laundering and ruled that the defendant has no case to answer. He discharged and acquitted the former minister on all counts. The judge said the allegation of illegal tax waivers granted to Shell and ENI was not corroborated by the Federal Inland Revenue Service or any authority. On the alleged 300 million Nara bribe said to have been given to Mr. Adoke by one Aliu Abubakar over the OPL 245 resolution, the court ruled that the EFCC did not provide the necessary evidence to prove its case. The EFCC had earlier conceded that it did not have sufficient evidence to oppose the no-case application by Mr. Adoke, who was listed as first defendant. Meanwhile, Justice Christopher Oba of the Federal Capital Territory High Court, APO, has granted the Senator representing Bielsa Central, Friday Benson, 50 million Nara bail. The Senator, who was arraigned on Tuesday on three charges bordering on forgery of the National Youth Service Corps Exemption Certificate, among others, was allowed to go home pending the ruling on his bail application. The counsel for the prosecution, Ruben Eguaba, had opposed the bail application, noting that the defendant would interfere with his trial if granted bail. The counsel for the defendant, Gordi Uche, assured the court that he would not jump bail. Justice Oba then granted him bail in the sum of 50 million naira and two sureties with landed property in the Federal Capital Territory. He subsequently adjourned the matter till June the 24th, 25th and 27th for hearing. Staying with legal matters, the detained Binance executive Tigran Gambaryan has accused the National Security Advisor Nuhu Ribadu and the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, of violating his fundamental human rights. In an originating motion, Mr. Ganbayan sought a declaration that his detention and seizure of his international travel passport contravenes Section 35.1 and 4 of the 1999 Constitution as amended. He urged the court to order the NSA and the EFCC to release him from their custody and return his international travel passport with immediate effect. Mr. Gambaryan equally sought an order of perpetual injunction restraining the respondents and agents from further detaining him in relation to any investigation into or demands from Binance. He urged the court to order for the respondents to issue a public apology to him, saying that he was in Nigeria alongside fleeing Nadim Anjawala to honor invitation of the sponsor and EFCC, that's the NSA and the EFCC, to discuss issues relating to Binance in Nigeria. During Thursday's proceedings, counsel to the plaintiffs informed the court that the respondents were served two days ago. Shortly after that, he announced that he was withdrawing from the matter as the counsel for the fleeing Anjawala did, but did not give reasons for his withdrawal. Now, the trial judge, Justice Inyang Ekwa, adjourned the matter till April the 8th. In part two, after the break, some top PDP leaders in River State threw their weight behind President Bola Tinubu and his administration's policies. Plus, our Drake Guild of Editors condemned the illegal arrest and detention of the editor of First News, Mr. Shegun Alatunji, while the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Malagi, reaffirms federal government's commitment to promoting press freedom. Please stay with us. They're already so heavy here. And they saw us traffic. I think we should go. Spot, huh? Not a chance. 
Aisha. We don't quit, guys. I'll be there. Don't. Two files received. I'm on my way. Take the first right in 50 meters and you're there. Copy that. Aisha, where are you? Guess where? Two minutes, two minutes, move! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Runway X. The future of fashion showcases. Very impressive. How did you pull that off? With Nigeria's top tech talents. And globe. Power your relentless ambition with ultra high speed data. Glow with pride. New Nivea dry deodorants. With 72 hour reliable odor protection from dual effect formula. For a dry and fresh skin feeling. Feel dry, fresh, and confident every day. As an online entrepreneur, I am an advocate for tax morale, and I urge my fellow entrepreneurs to fulfill their civic duty by filing their returns. I handle my business with integrity, and my customers trust me, and it is my civic duty to file my returns and pay my tax because I trust the government. It is my civic responsibility to file my income returns, pay my tax on time to avoid penalties. You have until 31st March 2024 to fulfill this important civic obligation. Failure to file your individual annual returns attracts stiff penalties on the falters. For inquiries, visit www.lirs.gov.ng. This message is from the Lagos State Internal Revenue Service, LIRS. I'm the businessman I am today because I scoured the world to find that feeling my clients want to wear. Yes, amen. This country makes it its business to inspire at every moment. Own your moments in South Africa. This is the holiday. Explore new holiday deals at SouthAfrica.net. Come journey with us. With Globo, you order anything you want, and when you receive it, you celebrate it with your whole body. Because when that tasty grilled chicken is here, the weekend starts. The ingredients for your favorite recipe, just in time. And when the cake arrives, the party is on. Because receiving anything on Globo deserves a dance. Download the app, order anything you want, and track it minute by minute until it arrives. Global, order anything, we deliver in minutes. Defense headquarters declares eight persons wanted over their roles in the heinous crime. Respite for former Attorney General of the Federation, Mohamed Adoke, as Federal High Court Abuja dismisses charges of fraud, bribery, and conspiracy filed against him by the EFCC. And another case of arson, this time in Anambra State, as some hoodlums attack and burn down divisional police station in the wee hours of today. Police authorities say the attackers number up to 30. The Public Accounts Committee of the House of Representatives is querying the payment of 15 billion naira to Remita from the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation. During an investigative hearing on revenue leakages, chairman of the committee, Bamidele Salam, alleges complicity on the part of the CBN and some commercial banks for the money to have been paid without an agreement or contract. Our correspondent, Terry Kumi, reports. The Public Accounts Committee of the House of Representatives resumes its investigative hearing on revenue leakages as it turns its attention to the remitter payments platform used by the federal government. And shared a cumulative sum of 15 billion naira payment made from the Office of the Accountant General between 2016 and 2018 has caught the attention of lawmakers. When the Attorney General of the Federation came here, he did tell us that uh, the Office of the Attorney General and Minister of Justice had no input whatsoever 
into this agreement between the CBN and the system spec. Is it correct that the VAT, VAT component, the VAT component of those payments are added up with the 150 Naira? And then it is 150 Naira plus the VAT that is now shared in line with, that's the position of, of some of the banks that came here. The CBN and the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation were given the opportunity to explain the fees charged under the Treasury single account using Remita. So there are fees, two chargeable fees include fees on payment, which is borne by the payer, and also fees on collections. The, the fees charged under the TSA policy are in line with the standard fee structure applicable in the banking industry. This agreement blah, 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 between System Spec Limited, a limited liability company whose address is so, 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 so. They are thereafter referred to as System Spec, which expression shall, where the consensus so admits, include its successors in title and assigns. So that makes this applicable to System Spec or any other company or persons that will succeed that particular company in any of its operations. Okay, case, so you alive. regard uh, the remitter now as a successor to System Spec? We need to. Correct. Meanwhile, the committee is warning the Federal Inland Revenue Service against contempt for failing to honor its invitation for a fourth time, pointing out that some value-added tax from the revenue collected by Remita ought to have gone to the FIRS, but is instead collectively shared among the CBN, commercial banks, and Remita. Some People's Democratic Party leaders in River State have pledged to support President Bola Tinubu's administration. The PDP leaders who announced their position at a press conference in Port Harcourt, River State, resolved to support the president and his policies, as well as Governor Similalai Fubara. At the briefing, where the former Minister of Transport, Abiy Sekibo, members of the defunct PDP Presidential Campaign Council, former PDP National Chairman, Uche Sekundas, former Governorship Aspirant, Celestino Mejia, and former lawmaker, Austin Okbara. We recognize the elected president of our country and pledge our full support for the success of his administration for the benefit of all Nigerians. In effect, we subscribe to the president's efforts at strengthening our economy, fighting insecurity, and promoting peace and harmony in our dear country, Nigeria. In the same vein, his Excellency Amo Pusenibo, Sir Simnia Lai Fubara, was elected democratically as governor of River State and also affirmed by the Supreme Court. As indigenous and critical stakeholders of River State, we give our dear government our total loyalty and support for the progress of our state and through him, support the pressure of the Republic of Nigeria, as we believe that working together, the good and interest of River State will be protected. With the election over, now is the time for real governance, for the progress of our state and nation. It is for this reason that we call on all our supporters to give total support and unalloyed loyalty to the governor of River State and Mr. President. We call on all Nigerians, irrespective of party, tribal or ethnic affiliation, to rally round the president during the administration so that working together, we will collectively overcome these hard economic and security challenges facing us all. Staying with politics, Professor of Political Economy and former presidential aspirant of the Labour Party, Professor Pat Otomi, has been speaking on the leadership crisis rocking the party, amongst other issues. While speaking on our political program, Politics Today, Professor Otomi explains that the coming days will determine if there was any need for convention or not. He adds that Nigeria needs to go back to the parliamentary system, which he says feels the pulse of the people more and will cater to their needs. Hustling has replaced thinking. National interest, you know, has been subverted 
by me, myself, and I grab because power has been defined in Nigeria as an opportunity for state capture and use of public resources for the good of the individual. Uh, and look at where we are in everything we do. Who no, no hijacked by who? I mean, like in all the political parties, characters are playing all kinds of games to prevent Nigeria from seeing the light. It's happening in every political party. And you see Nigeria falling and falling apart, but they don't care. They are so absorbed by self that they will do anything, exclude everybody, play any game, invent constitutions, and all kinds of things. But I, I, like I said to you, we will eventually find out whether there was a convention. Accountability is so missing in this current arrangement. It's so bad. In a parliamentary system, accountability increases. Uh, first of all, the fact that the people are close to government by the fact that their direct representatives get to parliament, those direct representatives pick one amongst them to lead them, and they're constantly being referred to or referring to uh, uh, the people and the problems and the challenges on a daily basis. And if the government is not delivering, if the government can fall today, we have a new government tomorrow. But here, all you have to do is make people poor and take advantage of their poverty, distribute some things to them on election day. For the next four years, nobody asks you any question. Meanwhile, the Julius Aburi-led National Working Committee of the Labour Party has dismissed threats of a leadership takeover by a group of members led by Comrade Ejofor, purportedly acting for the Party Board of Trustees. The National Publicity Secretary of the Party, Obiora Ifo, explained in a statement in Abuja today that the party was not aware of the existence of a Board of Trustees because the body was yet to be constituted. He further explained that the Labour Party on Wednesday successfully conducted its national convention in Niwi Anambra State, and Mr. Julius Aburi was unanimously elected by over 350 delegates that were in attendance. So let's head to the nation's capital now, where Terry Kumi is standing by to give us the very latest from our Buja studios. Hello, Terry. Well, hello, Ayo. Let's go to Kaduna State now, where Governor Obasani is offering free education to the recently freed 137 students of LEA Primary and Government Secondary School, Kuriga, in Chikun local government area of the state. The governor also made a 10 million naira donation to the family of the abducted school teacher who died in captivity, in addition to offering his children scholarship up to university level. The governor made the pronouncement when he addressed the children before their departure from Kaduna to Kuriga, promising to rebuild the community school and provide security and other basic infrastructure in the community. At last, the 137 children of the LEA Primary and Government Secondary Schools Kuriga in Kaduna State are returning home after they were forcefully taken away from their school by bandits on March the 7th. Before the commencement of the journey home, the Kaduna State Governor Obasani leads senior government officials to bid them goodbye after their release last Sunday. All the children here. Governor Sani assures the children that the kidnap experience will not in any way affect their education. He offers them automatic free education and other incentives for the Kuriga community. What I will say here is that uh, all the 137, like I promised them, they will be my children by the grace of God. And I've already directed Ubasani Foundation. My foundation has been in existence for the past 16 years. And our focus is on education and healthcare. So I'm not using Kadnoset government money, but I will use Ubasani Foundation to look after their education and I will try as much as possible to support them. The family of the abducted school teacher who died while in captivity is not forgotten. I've already taken the decision collectively uh, to support the family of Malen Abubakar with 10 million naira. And, uh, so we believe he has uh, very young children, and those children also, Kandosan government, will take care of them and give them scholarships until they finish secondary school or university. 
It's almost time to go, but not before one of the children speaks. We thank the government of Kaduna State to collect us from the hand of armed robbers. <laughs> One after the other, the children get into the waiting vehicles for their journey back home, assisted by Governor Sani and his deputy. by a heavy security presence, the children head home with the hope never to experience the unfortunate kidnap incident that took them away from their parents and school for 20 days. Well, still ahead on the news at 10, African Development Bank and Indorama signed $75 million loan agreement to boost Nigeria's fertilizer production and export capacity. That's on Business News. Please stay with us. Hanging out with friends and reaching for that refreshing bottle of soda. <laughs> but hold on a minute. What we don't always see is what's hidden inside those bottles. So when you reach for that bottle, can, or juice box, remember, it's not just a drink, it's a threat to your health. New Nivea Dry Deodorants. With 72-hour reliable odor protection from dual effect formula. For a dry and fresh skin feeling. Mm. Feel dry, fresh and confident every day. On my dark marks, I've tried everything. Nivea Lumina 630 works from day one with visible results in just two weeks and 71% dark marks reduction in 12. Join the 1 million women already using Lumina 630 from Nivea. Do you know that you can now print all your essential items for events without even having to leave your home? It's the Cast Prints Combo Deal for all events. Yes! Weddings, conferences, birthdays, burials, etc. Starting from 495 thousand naira only you get 50 invites 50 a2 size posters 50 16 page brochures one large backdrop banner one roll-up banner 50 jotters with pens and 50 souvenir carrier bags whatever event you're planning we can adjust to your budget and quantities just send your pictures and other information through whatsapp and we shall send a design for your approval approve your design and we will produce with super high quality digital print technology we can even arrange delivery to your location call us now on 0913-156-5 Zero one six or zero eight one two seven nine four nine three two three or visit our social media pages. Cast Prints, digital printing at super speed. Welcome back to the News at Ten, coming to you live from Channels Television. Now, the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohammed Idris, is reiterating the commitment of the federal government to promote press freedom noting that a free press remains the backbone of any democracy. Speaking in Abuja, while playing host to members of the Center for Media and Society, the minister assured that top on the agenda of the federal government through his ministry is freedom of the press. The organization was led on a visit by its executive director, Akin Akinbulu, who pledged a society support for the ministry and the federal government on her renewed hope agenda for Nigerians. Information management is not about propaganda. It's not about uh, saying things that are not untrue. It's about projecting the image of government while also protecting rights of citizens to information. And this is what we intend to uh, we intend to uh, uh, to keep. Um, the issue of uh, press freedom. Yes, the media uh, industry in this country. I, I still insist the media is largely free in this country. You may have one or two. Uh, infringements sometimes, uh, but the media is largely free. But President Bola Ahmed Chinubu intends to make it even freer. Uh, 
There is no way democracy can thrive if the media is not free. The media has to be free for democracy to thrive, and government is pursuing that vigorously. Uh, we must uh, uh, emphasize that the government of President Bola Amin because he himself is a product of, uh, of press freedom, and he cannot in any way attempt to stifle that freedom that he himself has enjoyed. Uh, his message consistently to Nigerians is that uh, uh, everyone will breathe. The poor, the rich, everyone will have to breathe. And it is the media that will create that environment uh, for that uh, uh, freedom to, to, to occur. In the meantime, the Nigerian Guild of Editors is calling on the president to ensure the punishment of the military officers involved in the illegal arrest and detention of the editor of First News, Mr. Shagun Olatunji. Mr. Olatunji, who has now been released, was arrested by men in military uniform from his home in the Abulegba area of Lagos State over a purported story on the chief of defense staff and military expenditure. The International Press Institute, Nigeria Union of Journalists, and the Nigerian Guild of Editors have also condemned the action. Addressing a joint news conference in Abuja, the secretary, Nigerian Guild of Editors, Iyobu Saugierin, notes that despite efforts by the family and colleagues of the editor to locate his whereabouts, the military denied having him in their custody. We are sure that many right-taking members of society, including the international community, are both amazed and shocked by the lawlessness and fear-provoking action of the DIA and agencies under the command of Major General Ndiadi, who reports directly to the Chief of Defense Staff, General Musa. The DIA's action makes us wonder about its real intention. Our suspicion is that they plan to secretly eliminate Mr. Latuji so that members of the public who attribute his disappearance to unknown gunmen. But we are glad to report this morning that they failed woefully. For us, this vicious, uncivilized, unlawful, and criminal action of the DIA is unacceptable. The action is alien to Nigerian democratic space. It is now clear that there are some officers in our military who are still finding it difficult to subject themselves to civil authority 24 years after our country returned to representative good governance. We do not think this kind of attitude should be condoned by President Bola Ahmed Tunubu, particularly and Nigerians in general. The Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Mr. Nyesum Wike, says he will ensure that outstanding projects awarded by the previous FCT administration are completed. He also expressed satisfaction with the pace of work on the road project and hopes that the President will assent to the appropriation bill of the FCT recently passed by the National Assembly in order to ensure construction of new projects. He was speaking after inspecting some road projects in Saburi and Buari. Our correspondent Kumbia Boluade reports. After flagging up road projects nominated by chairman in the six area councils in the Federal Capital Territory about a month ago, the FCT minister, Yesom Wiki, embarks on an inspection tour to some of the project sites to assess the level of work done. The first stop is the Buari Area Council Road project, which is awarded to Satroco Construction Company. The minister then proceeds to Saburi community, where construction of access road is ongoing. After the inspection of the project, the minister expressed contentment with the level of work done. I feel so happy that I'm part of this administration, that the people can see changes. Again, we are here in Saburi which is under uh, Abuja Municipal Council, and you can see the work going on. I'm proud that the contractors are doing very well, and by the grace of God, all these projects, particularly the six projects in the six area councils, will be completed before the end of this year. 
He also reiterates his commitment to prioritize outstanding projects awarded by the previous administration, while explaining that 58% of the capital projects in the FCT's over 1.1 trillion appropriation bill is allocated for ongoing projects. We have allocated 58% of the capital projects to the ongoing projects, and then 42% for new projects, which I said after the asset of Mr. President, so the statutory um, to the appropriation uh, bill, then we'll start the implementation of the new projects in the 2024 statutory uh, uh, appropriation. And we are saying that it will not be proper to abandon old projects because they are all public funds. The minister further explains that once ongoing projects are completed, new road projects will be initiated in all area councils in the FCT. From the nation's capital, Kumbi Abuluwadi, Channels Television News. In other stories, the president has approved the appointment of Dr. Abdullahi Bellu as the chairman of the Code of Conduct Bureau, pending confirmation by the Senate. A statement by the Special Advisor on Media and Publicity to the President, Adjuri Gilali, explains that Dr. Bello is a consummate professional with more than 25 years of work experience in consulting, banking, law enforcement, financial services and academia. The new chairman is expected to lead the Bureau with utmost integrity, ensuring high standards of public morality and accountability. Now, the, Catholic, the Archbishop of the Catholic Diocese of Abuja, His Holiness, Ignatius Kegama, is urging Nigerian leaders and citizens to imbibe the virtues of service and love for one another as demonstrated by Jesus when he was on earth. Speaking at a mass to commemorate Holy Thursday, Father Ndukuba, who counseled Nigerian leaders to serve the interest of those who elected them to office, also asked the Nigerian citizens to demonstrate love for their neighbors and be their brother's keeper. Even though he is God, he's able to kneel down and wash the feet of his disciples. He says, what I have done, you do likewise. He is a teacher, a teacher of love, a teacher of service. Today, we celebrate that verse of John, chapter 13, verse 34. He says, as a new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. That is the essence. We are saying after receiving the gift of the Eucharist, after celebrating together as a family, it shouldn't end here. We go out and let it spread. Let love be palpable. Let it be concrete. Touch somebody's lives. Even as an ordinary citizen, you can touch somebody's life positively. As a leader, you are bound. You have an obligation. You are mandated by the Nigerian constitution to serve. And if we can serve like Jesus, washing the feet of those who are our subordinates, washing the feet of citizens, not in a literary sense, but in a figurative sense, that you serve them, you love them, you care for them, you provide for their needs, and you ensure their security, safety, and then their happiness. This is what we ask of our leaders. Well, that's all from the nation's capital. Let's go back to Lagos for the rest of the news. Many thanks, Terry. Gergu Power PLC has declared a dividend of 20 billion naira at 8 naira per share for the year ended 2023. These figures were announced by the chairman, board of directors, Mr. Femi Otedola, at the company's 12th annual general meeting held in Lagos. Gergu Power PLC is the first company to hold its AGM this year in 2024. It's an atmosphere filled with anticipation as stakeholders convene for the 12th annual general meeting of Girigou Power PLC. Girigou Power PLC is a power generation company domiciled in Ajaukuta, Kogi State. It's one of Nigeria's leading Jenkos that uses gas turbine as a clean energy source to generate power. Against the backdrop of significant global economic challenges in the previous year, including the lingering effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and the ongoing Israel-Palestinian conflict, among others, 
Girigou Power PLC proudly announces a profitable year 2023, buoyed by a solid financial performance. A glance into the company's annual report and financial statements for the year ended December 31, 2023, shows there was a substantial increase in revenue, which surged to 82.9 billion naira from 47.6 billion naira in 2022. Gross profit also increased by 84% to 42.7 billion naira, while profit for the year rose to 16 billion naira. In light of the successes recorded, the board proposes a generous dividend distribution. The board of directors have proposed a final dividend of 8 naira per share for your ratification. This dividend will apply to those names which are recorded in the register of shareholders as of February 27, 2024. We affirm in its commitment to process improvement and excellence. The board outlines plans for sustained growth in the new year. Generation in terms of capacity is in excess of uh, the great constraints that we have. Um, however, once this has been ramped up, we believe before the end of the year, there will be adequate power supply and improvements in the overall infrastructure. Uh, we need and the government to solve a few issues about gas uh, issues, price of the gas issues, evacuation of the electricity from the power station. And if all this problem will solve, I think we can achieve the target of 1,000 to 300 megawatt. As the curtain closes on the 12th annual general meeting, a sense of optimism permeates the air as the board aims to ensure that Girigou Power PLC remains at the forefront of the energy sector. Time now for some business news with Will Ebonk. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. Thanks, Ayotunde, and welcome to Business News. Now, the African Development Bank has signed a $75 million loan agreement with Nigeria's Indorama LMF Fertilizer and Chemicals Limited, marking a milestone in the country's agricultural landscape. This loan aims to support fertilizer production capacity and establish a crucial port terminal for exports, which will in turn boost food production and security, as well as create jobs in Nigeria. The expansion initiative comprises the construction of a third urea fertilizer production line and a novel shipping terminal at Indorama's Port Harcourt facilities with an expected capacity of 1.4 million metric tons of urea annually. As the Naira continues to gain against the dollar, hitting a six-week high of 1,300 Naira, economists are calling for caution. The chief executive officer of financial derivatives company, Mr. Biz Makrowani, who was on business morning earlier today, believes that the fair value of the Naira can only be achieved when forex supply comes from exports instead of the current factor, which is the central bank's intervention in the market. The cobweb theorem in economics which means that uh, prices always move and exaggerate themselves in the wrong direction. So <clears throat> was it natural for the Naira to fall from 800 to 1,900? No, I think that was exaggerated. So what we are seeing now is a correction and a point of inflection where the Naira is coming back towards its fair value. So what, is the currency misaligned? Yes, it is misaligned. Is it getting back towards fair value? Yes. Is it, is it running ahead of itself? I think it is. I think this acquisition is, is being overdone. It will, come, it, will, it will normalize very soon. So don't get carried away by the fact that it's going to go to God knows what. I think stable rates should be at about 1,300, 1,400 for now. And then we see how things happen because the, it's all about supply. The supply is not there yet right now, but that's not being worked upon. Now the domestic equities market sustained bullish sentiments as investors wrap up purchases ahead of the Easter holiday. Inijan Mekwa tells us more.
it's the final trading day for the week and the market is building on that gains of yesterday. Today, the market gained 459 billion naira in numbers. The percentage now we see 0.27% is what that amounts to. And the market is building on the 104,000. So it closes at 104,562.06 for the all share index and 59.419 trillion naira for the market cap. The market mover once again, a second time this week is MTN Nigeria. MTN Nigeria opened at 229 naira, but closed at 232 naira. That's a 0.91% gain on the share. So if you have a share of MTN, you just made some money for the week. Consumer goods are looking at the counters right now. It's up for the first time in about three trading sessions. Even though it's not so much, but PZ did this. PZ, Nigerian breweries, and Nestle, uh, they brought that up to 0.09%. Banking is still sustaining that green color, even though not as good as it did yesterday. 0.6% is the number for that. Oil and gas is still doing that thing. It's been doing for some days right now. But the good news is that it's a weekend, a holiday, and a weekend put together, and the bull is going to be on the floor of the NGX. Thank you, Ini. Now let's see how other major stock markets ended today's trading session. And that's a wrap on business news. It's back to you, Ayotunde. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. Many thanks, Will. 45 people have lost their lives in South Africa after the bus they were in plunged some 50 meters, that's about 165 feet, off a bridge into a ravine in Limpopo province. Well, here's Simon Puzo with other international news in Around the World in Five. Good evening and welcome to the channel's studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. A recent UN-backed report offers hard statistical evidence that the humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza is turning into a man-made famine. It has increased the pressure on Israel to fulfill its legal responsibilities to protect Palestinian civilians and to allow adequate supplies of humanitarian aid to reach the people who need it. The UN's most senior human rights official, Volker Turk, said that Israel bore significant blame and that there was a plausible case that Israel was using starvation as a weapon of war in Gaza. When it comes to humanitarian assistance, let's be clear. Israel is an occupying power and has an obligation to provide humanitarian assistance. And if that humanitarian assistance does not come in, in the scale of speed and predictability, that is required, yes, very serious questions are raised. Meanwhile, officials say Israel has asked the White House to reschedule a high-level meeting on military plans for Gaza's southern city of Rafah, the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had abruptly cancelled. Netanyahu called off a planned visit to Washington by a senior Israeli delegation after the U.S. allowed passage of a Gaza ceasefire resolution at the United Nations on Monday, marking a new wartime low in his relations with President Joe Biden. Prime Minister's office uh, has agreed, has agreed uh, to reschedule the meeting dedicated to Rafa. So we're, we're uh, now working uh, with them to set, to find a convenient date uh, that's obviously gonna work for both sides, but he, his office has agreed uh, to, uh, to reschedule that meeting that would be dedicated uh, to Rafa. The bodies of two people have been recovered from a red pickup truck, which was underwater where the Baltimore Bridge collapsed. Drone footage over the site shows in detail the scale of the damage. Eight construction workers were on the bridge when a ship struck it. Two workers were rescued on the day, but the search continues for the other four, all presumed dead. Salvage crews are working to address hazardous materials and accident investigators are on the scene. Today, 
we transitioned from search and rescue to recovery. We need to bring a sense of closure and comfort to the families, and we take that very seriously. And to all the families, I say, estamos contigo, ahora y siempre. Less than an hour after the collapse, we had divers in the water at 2.25 a.m. to begin search and rescue. Four people have been killed and at least five injured after a man armed with a knife went on a rampage in the U.S. state of Illinois. Police in Rockford say the attacks occurred following a home invasion. One of the injured is in a critical condition. The victims are a 15-year-old girl, a 63-year-old woman, a 49-year-old man and a 22-year-old man. Another 22-year-old man has been arrested and is being questioned by police. Police say the motive for the attacks remains unclear. People have been evacuated after a fire broke out at a petrol station outside of downtown Bowling Green in Kentucky. A nearby school and several local businesses were put under evacuation orders after the blaze broke out. The origin of the fire is currently under investigation. China has announced it will remove significant tariffs on Australian wine in another key sign of improving relations between the two countries. Beijing imposed taxes of more than 200% in 2020 amid a string of economic blows to Australian exports. That year, Beijing targeted Australian coal, barley, timber and lobsters as part of a wider political falling out. But China-Australia relations have improved since a new Canberra government was elected in 2022. And an Australian state premier has backed a campaign to return an Instagram famous magpie to its human carers after it was seized by wildlife authorities. The bird, dubbed Molly, was rescued as a chick by a Queensland couple and formed an unlikely bond with their bull terrier, Peggy. More than two million people follow a Peggy and Molly profile online. Queensland's leader, Stephen Miles, says Molly should be reunited with the family, contradicting state officials. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel's studios in Lagos. Thank you, Simon. Welcome to Sports News. The Confederation of African Football CAF has announced the date for the finals of the 2023-24 CAF Champions League and the Confederation Cup. The Champions League final first leg will hold on May the 18th, while the return leg on May the 25th. Newcastle midfielder Sandra Tonali has been charged with misconduct by England's Football Association relating to 50 alleged incidents of betting on matches. Tonali's multiple alleged breaches is uh, reported to have taken place between August the 12th and um, October the 12th, 2023. The 23-year-old has uh, until April the 5th to respond. And that sports is back to you, Ayotunde. Thanks, Chris. The traditional ruler of Iwo Kingdom, Clement Ikolo, who is one of the eight people declared wanted by the Nigerian army in connection with the killing of the 17 army personnel in Okwama of Delta State, has absolved himself of the shocking events that led to the death of the 17 army personnel in Okwama Kingdom. Or the monarch who spoke to journalists before reportedly turning himself in to the police custody insists he is innocent in the matter. He says he would never denigrate to the position of taking someone else's life, especially people who have wives and children. Meanwhile, the PPRO of the Delta State Police Command has confirmed to Channels Television that he is in their custody. And the main news again, or the defense uh, head, beg your pardon, or the... Or, or the Central Bank of Nigeria has unveiled new minimum capital requirements for banks and has given them 24 months to recapitalize and raising minimum capital to 500 billion, 200 billion and 50 billion naira for banks with international, national and regional authorizations. And that's the news of 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Ayo Tundi Baluk. Do have a good night.
Hello.